Do you think that having Vice President Kamala Harris as the nominee dramatically changes Donald Trump's odds of winning? I'm worried about it. Okay. Yes. I think she's going to go for the minority and female and young, younger voters. Progressive. Everybody's excited about her, right. and that scares me. Right. You know, because I Trump has to reconfigure where he's going and how they're going to um, outsmart her. Hey guys, my name is Corey Barton. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be responding to this um, this type of interview that MSNBC, yeah, out of all people, they basically did two things. First, they brought a panel of Trump supporters on and asked them a few questions. And then they brought a panel of swing voters, meaning voters that are uh, undecided. They have not really chosen a candidate. They really don't have a party affiliation either and ask them some questions as well. And we want to react to this and dive into this, especially when it comes to the mindset, because again, you're going to see how the media likes to spin the stories and how the media disregarded some of the stuff that was said in there that could be damaging to Vice President Harris and her you know, her run to be the president of the United States. So what I want to do is show you guys all of this and more. Uh, but before we do that, you know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Let's play that first video. How do you perceive Vice President Harris compared to President Biden in terms of competency and experience? I think she's worse. She doesn't even know what's going on at the border. Right. I'm, and that's what she was, she was supposed to be, to be doing doing and in charge of i mean as a school teacher if i did not do what i was supposed to be doing okay. you better believe my job would be in jeopardy well well that's what all politicians have in common is they're not going anywhere i mean let's just be honest about that i know when i was serving in the military one of the biggest complaints we've always had of politicians is there's no limits as long as you can serve in congress uh, you pretty much are guaranteed a retirement, security, um, and connections that will probably make you rich for the rest of your life. Uh, however, you are a police officer, firefighter, uh, you know, you serve in the military, you're not getting any of that, right? And so they definitely, it's like an inherent conflict of interest when we're talking about these politicians, right? Because they're the ones who make the laws. So I do, I do hear what she's saying. Um, and that's why they're never really going to do what they say they're going to do. And that's I would argue that's really on both sides. It isn't. It not only was her job not in jeopardy, she was just handed a promotion. Is there anyone that Kamala Harris could appoint as her vice president that you would find reassuring? Would make you consider voting for her? No, no, oh, no, no, no. no. Never consider voting for her. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. And never has been, probably never will be. You know, people, when they vote, they're not voting based on who the vice president is. They're voting based on who the president is. You know, when, when people went out and voted for President Trump, it wasn't because Mike Pence was his, his vice president. It just isn't. Now, you need a vice president, but it's not the deciding factor on whether or not someone is going to win the election. It always comes down to the president. That's why it's called presidential debate. That's why it gets the most attention, right? So it, it, they're, they're spot on about that. I would know RFK Jr. way before yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and she yeah that, that's a very important part too, which one could argue it may be in another alternate universe, the most objective or smartest play would have been a Trump and Kennedy ticket. Um, you know, I'm not too sure that Kennedy would agree to that. RK would agree to that. I'm not too sure Trump would agree to that. But if you're trying to win an election and you already have the Republicans in the bag, all that is left is the independents and swing voters. I mean, an RFK will eat that up really quickly, right? But that's not the universe we live in. But I do find it interesting that people would rather vote for RFK Jr. instead of Kamala Harris. Now, 
let me make this point, and I made this over and over and over already. Why is it that RFK Jr. is not the nominee on the Democrat side? Because he's a person that they cannot control. That's why he's an outsider. When you see people who were Democrats and now claim to be independents is because they are not controlled by the same forces that other Democrats are. And so when that happens, they're not going to get the same respect and attention that other Democrats will be. So if we really thought about it or if we really put some thought into it, you know, who technically would be a better candidate, RFK Jr. or Kamala Harris? Obviously, RFK Jr., because her resume speaks for herself. It, it, there's nothing for her to show. She hasn't done anything. The, what she has done has been complicit in the cover up of President Biden and his mental decline. That's what she's done. She's not the first woman to run for the presidency, Hillary Clinton. I'm assuming no one voted for Hillary Clinton no, in no. 2016. So it's not necessarily going to sway you to vote for a woman in office. Uh, when do you think America will have a female president? When there's a competent one? Just, hmm. I, I don't get a good feel for her. I think she's an idiot. Right. Mary, why do you think that she's not that bright? Because she hasn't done anything in the, the time that she's had. We don't know anything about her as far as her three years so far in the White House. She's not real smart. That's my... Well, we, we do know that she's been covering for President Biden. She's been lying to the American people and the public about his mental fitness and acuity. Uh, she was lying that the border was secure, right? I mean, we know that's what she was doing, right? We know that their policies have not been very, uh, you know, productive or effective when it comes to improving the lives of everyday Americans. We know that. But MSNBC is never going to say that, right? So I'm shocked they're even doing this uh, interview, by the way. Let's keep going. Opinion. It could be wrong. If Vice President Kamala Harris wins the election, do you think that will be an honest result? No. Absolutely. No. No one respects her. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? And obviously, those are Trump supporters, so they are going to be biased in their responses. But there's a lot of truth to what they were saying. No one knows who she is. She has no record of any kind. Uh, whatever she's saying she has done, there's no credibility to it. What we can say and that we do know if President Biden had to drop out of the race, then clearly he is not fit to lead. He's probably not even fit to be the president right now. We know this. And everyday Americans see this, especially because of the debate, which is why I thought it was really good that MSNBC also interviewed independents, undecided or swing voters, whatever they call them, people who are not really tied to any candidate to get their feedback. Let's check that out. If you have one concern about President Trump, tell me that concern. And then what's your one concern about Kamala Harris? For me, my concern about Trump is him making too aggressive of choices and us not being able to recover from it. I appreciate that he is willing to, if a bomb is dropped on our doorstep, he is out the door as fast as it hit us. But that does make me nervous because did we vet everything that's gonna happen of it. My concern about Harris is a bomb is dropped on our doorstep, it's gonna be six months before we move and now we're viewed as weak. So again. Yeah, good. I, I respect her. I guess, point of view on both of those points. Um, you know, I, I think the first point about being scared that Trump is going to be impulsive in his response, I think is unfounded. I, 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 there's no data or studies or videos or clips to prove that he's that type of person. Now, where they're probably getting it from is because when he go to, goes to his rallies, he just spits off, off the front of his... He just says what he wants to say. He just calls it how it is, right? And he uses his personality to do it. That doesn't mean when it comes to a high pressure situation where leadership is absolutely involved, that he's gonna be like that. And furthermore, I don't think you become a billionaire and also being responsible for a lot of the uh, skyscrapers that have been built in New York City and being that type of person. I'd, I'd, I'd like to 
give him the benefit of the doubt because I haven't seen anything like that. So that's one. Two, um, she's absolutely correct. It's not even going to be six months. It's going to be never. They're not going to respond. They are not going to respond. Just look at the Ukraine situation. Look at the Israel situation. It's a failure to do anything. That's what this current administration should be called, a failure to do anything. They haven't done anything. They've just let everything happen. They've yet to put their foot down on anything whatsoever. There's no boundaries. There's no rule of law. There's none of that. And as a result, we have what we have. Let's keep going. Which route do I really want to go? It's personal questions on myself. So it makes me a little nervous on both sides. What are you, Brad? It would just be nice if they concentrate more on the issues instead of the mudsling and personal attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got problems in this country. Let's. The left ring and the right ring are on the same bird. I mean, let's let's try to find that common ground where we can't agree on things. Let's start with that. What about you, Karen? I don't think we can ignore um, Trump's convictions, his integrity, his moral character. Um, I worry about him if he gets retaliation for you know something. He, gets him up okay so they're worried that president trump yeah president trump who's been president before and has never shown any type of retaliation whatsoever the whole the whole government was investigating this guy and he never took it out on any of them he never called for an investigation into uh the fbi or the cia they never did any of that in fact he had the power to nix all of those investigations and he didn't do that that's why I say a lot of these fears that they have is because the media has been cramming this down people's throats and making people see him a certain way. But the results don't show that. So I, I think that is just a fear that she has that, you know, there's like if, if she was a client of mine, I would ask her, where are you getting this fear from? Where are you getting the belief from that he would do something like this? Have you seen anything to, to lead you to believe that he would do something like this? Have you seen him do something like this already? Now, we've already seen on the Democrat side that that's exactly what they've been doing. They've been prosecuting people. They've been very biased. The DOJ has been literally politicized and weaponized against President Trump. I mean, if, if you just look at what a lot of people, they, they, they act like it's not feasible. It absolutely is. It's called politics. And if you've worked for the government or you've been in the military or law enforcement, you know what I'm talking about. At a certain level, if you get high enough, it's 100 percent political. And the politics is what drives the culture and the decision making from the top down. This is why there was an assassination attempt on President Trump, because politics has ruined the Secret Service. That's what's going on. So the very thing that these voters are scared of has already happened, but not on the Republican side. It's happened on the Democrat side. And he's going to retaliate without slowing down, thinking it through. Um, I, I honestly need to get more information about um, Camilla because I just don't know enough about yeah. her. So I'm, I'm going to wait That's and fair. see. I have to kind of step back and see. I've learned a lot just through mm -hmm. our conversation today about her that uh, that's I found really interesting. Who do you blame for President Biden being in office in this condition? Who deserves the blame? His close staff. They work with him every day. So I think that's what also makes me nervous about the Vice President Harris. Yeah. And Talk about right. that a bit. So yes, she's going to be in it but she also helped keep him in where he's at right now. And if he really is as bad as what they've been saying, I think if he steps down as president and she steps into the presidency before the end of his term, it almost makes me question a little bit more why it didn't happen sooner. She's worked with him. She's yeah. yeah let's, to let's, my let's just stop it right there because let, let me show you what the media has done. If you were to look at the headlines, and the titles of this this entire interview, this part of it is not even on the internet. I mean, I, I mean, we're watching it right now, 
but it's not like the highlight clip, okay? And then the headlines, if I actually scroll up here, what does it say? Everyone is excited about her, and that scares me. Female Trump voters on Harris, right? And then if you read the little description they have here, MSNBC political analyst Elise Jordan talks to the female Trump voters and right-leaning right -leaning swing voters in the state of Wisconsin. Right? It, it's, <laughs> I mean, everything about it is bias, right? Uh, and they're reporting. They're even biased with their own stuff that they're supposed to report. But anyways, I just thought that that's pretty funny that this is not even a, it, it, they, they don't even lead with Trump voter. They, they should have put Trump voters versus swing voters and their answers on the 2024 election, right? That would be more unbiased. Um, but of course, they're not going to do that. So I digress. And she made a very good point, too, that I also want to bring to your guys' attention. I keep saying this. Vice President Harris is complicit in all of this. If Joe Biden steps down, President Biden steps down, and people start to think that is crazy and that is a disappointment, then if she's the second in command, she knows what was going on. She knows. Meeting with him daily, or at least a couple of days a week, why hasn't this been brought to attention if she's willing to hide that type of information once she's in office? Now what she's willing to hide for herself. Hmm. And so I think that makes me a little bit uneasy, not necessarily that I wouldn't vote for her for it, but it definitely opens that questioning of why, why now? Why are you now being okay with exposing Biden's health concerns? Is it because it benefits you or kind of what that line of questioning looks like? Yeah, and this is why the Democratic machine is not going to, um, they're, they're not going to allow the media to report anything else on Biden's condition. Unless it's something that they cannot prevent, like the debate, there is no way for them to go on the news the next day and act like nothing happened. Unless something like that happens again, they're going to continue to cover it up. They're going to suppress it. Anytime people bring it up or try to question, you know what they're going to say? Oh, well, listen, this guy, he he's graceful and he's such a patriot because he dropped out of the race. He's doing fine. That's what they're going to say. They're going to act like nothing ever happened. And they're already doing it. So uh, she's kind of there where she sees that she sees that. And but it's not enough for her to be like to say outright, oh, no, I'm not voting for uh, President Harris or Vice President Harris. So, you know, this may be a good feedback for Republicans and President Trump to really double down on highlighting the policies, the failed policies, highlighting that, you know, uh, President Biden's um, condition was terrible and they all knew it and it contributed to the failed policies connect the policies because if you connect the policies that's where people hurt the most um and that's what's real for them so yeah I, i'm sure they already are already know all that yeah is it a power grabber does anyone agree with Alyssa's point that it calls into the vice president's judgment that she has been around while Biden's health has deteriorated. 100% agree. But it also okay. seems like that's kind of how she carries herself. She kind of does what in the moment she needs to do to continue to move forward and move up. Mm, doesn't that sound familiar? That's exactly the story of her entire political career. She'll do and say whatever she needs to say uh, to get to where she needs to get to or wherever she wants to, to get to. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with calling that out because it is facts, you know, uh, and, you know, when you watch this, <laughs> I, I actually love that people are seeing this because sometimes you, you we get this impression because of the media that we're the only ones that are highlighting this hypocrisy and these obvious questions about President Biden and his health. But it's good to see that everyday Americans are seeing the same thing. Um, and they're not afraid to speak on it, and it is a concern for them. So that is a good thing. And it also speaks to the uphill battle that Vice President Harris actually has ahead of her. So if she does end up becoming the official nominee, yeah, she has her work cut out for her because there's no way to explain that you didn't know that President Biden was that bad. And he, he didn't get that bad just overnight, right? The day before the debate, he wasn't like 100% 100, 100 and then he shows up to the 
debate and he's like 60 percent like no he was already like that over time he was like that so that i don't think there's a way that she's going to be able to really explain that away so hopefully uh president trump and his team continues to hammer that home and there's definitely no way that she's going to be able to explain the policies as well because literally she's running on no policies uh she's running on feelings um she's running on rhetoric and it's not really going to work. And I keep saying this all the time in my videos. I just think that people from a mindset point of view, they're done with the gaslighting. They're done with the pandering. They they know the media is biased at this point. Um, they, they they see what they see. And what's, what's happened is the media is trying to get people to not acknowledge what they see. And it's backfiring. And so with Wisconsin... Uh, you've got Michigan, you've got um, Pennsylvania. There's a lot of people in those swing states. I mean, those votes really matter. And so it's not like she she's she has those votes in, in the back. She does not. Uh, and she's not doing, uh, she's still losing. If you look at the polls, she's still losing. You know, and again, they're going to come out biasly and say, oh, well, you know, it's within the margin of error. Okay. But she's still losing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, that's my mindset on this. Uh, what's yours? What do you guys think about both of these interviews? Um, what do you think about the lady saying she was scared of Vice President Harris, which I thought was crazy? But also, what do you think about the swing voter acknowledging that, hey, Vice President Harris' judgment on covering up President Biden's mental acuity? Yeah, that's a big freaking deal. Well, I want to hear your answers and more in the comment section below. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. I will see you guys in the next one.